hello friends welcome back this is Omit from magnet and today we are going to create this awesome looking animated grass animation inside element 3d and also create some cool landscape by using those grasses so first take a look what we are going to create Okay, so before I start I have to say that if you are new to this channel please check my youtube channel and you will find so many videos related to element 3d and so many free models for element 3d so if you like this please subscribe this channel and if you want to do a little bit more you can also join me as a member okay so in order to create this we need this animated grass obj sequence and I'm also give this obj sequence in the description so you will get this from there and I recommend you to download this first because without this we can do this together so let's do this so first we create a new composition for our scene so create a new composition and the time is to the 10 seconds long and hit ok and then we create a new solid for our element layer and then we name this to key3d and just hit ok now we come over this effect and presets and inside the video copilot we will find the element layer i mean the element plugin and then we go to the scene setup here so first we import our obj sequence so go to the file import and 3d sequence and here is the obj sequence we just select the first one and just hit open and now hit ok and it will import it here and you will see the baked animation this is the 240 frame long animation and which is if you uh, use a 24 fps uh, composition you will make a 10 seconds long video with this sequence okay so many of my subscriber ask me that whenever they import any obj sequence sometimes the texture is not appeared here so maybe it's because the texture directory is not same as this uh, as the elementary registered for this uh, model so if not appeared in your scene you have to put it the uh, textures manually so how you do this just select this and I'm also give the texture file uh, with this obj sequence and it is present in a folder so we have to open and uh, download the uh, file and you will also get the texture file as well so once you open the texture file you just put it in the respective slots like this one to the grass and then to the uh, for this model you also put the texture for this same which is the mf underscore steam and the mf underscore leaf for this one so you will also get all the texture uh, with the model okay so once you import everything we need to change some setting to this material okay first we select the model and go down here and you will find the optimize mesh and it is very important if you have a very low in spec in your computer so you can see that there is a vertex in the faces it's a very big number here and if you turn this on you will see that this number is decreasing and it will create a little less load to your gpu okay then we select this one and first we go to the subsurface scattering which is represented sss and we just enable this and then we change the color to maybe something like this and hit ok and also select this uh, settings icon here and just go to the very bottom and there is the option called drop back face just turn this on okay and do the same for this one as well so first we change this to drop back face and then go to the subsurface scattering just enable this and in this case this is the color is close to the green so we change the color to maybe something like greenish like here 
just like this and hit ok and do the same for the last one as well turn this on and change the color to maybe something this kind of green and hit ok and also select this setup icon i mean the settings icon and draw the draw back face just turn this on okay so this is all set up here and now we go to the this view mode and go to the front view and you can see that this is uh, placed little bit up here so we just let me push it down to the surface okay and then we go to the perspective so now our animated obj sequence for the grass is ready for to set up okay and now we put some surface and the sky dome as well so for this i'm going to use this preset and if you don't know that how you can make preset like this i made a dedicated tutorial on this and this tutorial is showing up in the i button here and also in the description so if you don't know you can check this out and talking about this uh, environment i recommend you to you have to download my own uh, hdri map pack for element 3d which is is something like this that is the magnet hdri pack and which is absolutely free and i'm also give the link in the description so you will get this from there and by using this you also create a very nice background for your scene and uh, our element 3d version 2 is uh, engineered for the physical base lighting so if you use any kind of outdoor hdri map your lighting will be so nice because the lighting also cast on the object in the basis with the environment okay so now for this scene i'm going to use this hdri map here and you can see that the lighting is changed because our material is EVR material which is uh, interact with the environment lightings as well okay so it look nice for now and I'm also recommend you to download this for this kind of result okay so first we go over here and we just click and drag it out from this group and place it in the group number one which is present already present in the group number one and also we go here which is our background um, scene which is the plane and the sky dome we we'll just click and drag it out from the group as well and place it in the group number five okay and now we can delete this so our background is present in the group number five and our grass is present in the group number one okay so this is all done here and now we put some other meta object here uh, which is basically some trees and some rock here so i'm using the rock model from the mega scan and if you don't know how you download the mega scan assets and you ready for element 3d you have to see my dedicated tutorial on this and this tutorial is showing up in the i button here right now and also in the description so you will understand that how you can download any model from mega scan and how you can import it uh, very nicely to the element 3d okay so for this i'm going to use some rock model here so first we go to the the model directory and i uh, save all my quicksell model in the quicksell model folder here and maybe we use some rock model so let's find that so maybe i use this one so just click on here and you will see this rock look really nice and if you uncheck this draft texture here and you will see that the detailing is so nice for those rocks and you can see i mean the detail is so nice here okay so we use those rocks as our rock model here and we're going to place it in a group number two okay and then we also use some trees for our scene so let's use some tree and for the tree i am recommend you to download my own tree model pack which is the magnet tree model pack version 1.0 and more than 50000 people already download this and they find it very helpful so if you don't if you are not download this pack yet i recommend you to i mean i strongly recommend you to download because it contains so many trees and those trees are really look awesome for your scene okay so maybe we use some trees but uh, because our trees are so static which is not an obj sequence so maybe we use some trees without the leaves 
because if your grasses are moving and your tree leaves are not moving it really look weird or awkward kind of so uh, just sake of this tutorial i'm using some trees without the leaves okay so maybe we use this one so this tree look nice okay but the tree material is not uh, i mean i don't like this tree material here i mean the texture so maybe i use another tree texture here from here and replace those texture by this so maybe i use i mean i just use this one that is the aspen tree new and i just use it only for those uh, texture so i delete this because once you import any object the texture is registered here so i just delete this and just put this texture to this tree okay so just click and drag it drop to this tree okay and you will see that that material is appeared here so now if your material section is full of um, different material which is not in use you can delete them by clicking here and you will find the option that is the remove unused material just click on this and it will remove all the material which is not in use here okay so now you can see that this tree here okay and now one thing you're probably thinking that every time you use the same tree here so why not we use some variation here so how you make a different tree from a from this tree okay so how you do this just select this option here, which is the rotate tool here and press alt and just rotate this axis here okay then rotate this and you will see that you duplicate this tree here and now we select this tree and scale it down like this and maybe you place it here okay so in this way you can create a really brand new design for your tree okay so maybe we scale it down little bit and place it here so you will see that it creates a new design for your tree okay so this look nice and we place this to maybe the group number three okay so our ground plane which is present in the group number five our wind uh, i mean the grass wind is present in the group number one and the rock model present in the group number two and the tree group number three okay so you are all done here and now we hit okay okay so first we create a camera for our scene so go to the layer new and create a camera and 20 millimeter is look nice and now hit okay then we select our camera to layer okay and if you rotate your camera you will see that the scene look like something like this so first you go to our element 3d layer and go to the group number two and just disable this for now and then go to the group number three also disable this for now because we only need the grass here okay so first we select our group number one which is uh, represent the grasses here and then we go to the particle replicator and change the replicator shape to plane and then we increase the count just like this okay so more count more look nice but remember that if you make a very big number here your render will be heavier and then we increase the shape scale so now you will create a very nice field of grass here okay just like this and maybe we again increase the scale shape and also increase the particle count and then we go over the particle look then we increase the particle size like this and also increase the particle size randomness but little bit not much and also increase this size and then we go to the particle rotation and then we go to the randomized angle or maybe the random rotation and we only randomize the y rotation but very little amount not much just like this okay so now you will see that this look amazing okay so now we go to the group number two and just enable this so the our group number two represent the rock model here okay just enable this and then we go to the particle replicator and then we again change this to plane and again we increase the count and just increase the scale shape and also we do one thing that go to the particle look and decrease the particle size and increase the particle randomness to maybe 100 or 50 or 55 maybe increase the particle size a little bit more 
and even if you want you can increase the vertical count it is all depends on you that how much your pc can handle and more count the more your the rock and the your scene look more bigger okay so this is the trick and you will see that it's already looking awesome so now we go to the group number three which is represent the tree just enable this for now and go to the particle replicator change the maybe change to the plane and increase the count just like this okay and now we increase the scale shape okay so now we go over this particle loop and increase the shape and increase the particle randomness and then you go to the particle rotation go to the randomized angle and just increase the count here and also do the same for the group number two which is the rock model here go to the particle loop go to the particle rotation and randomize angle or go to the random rotation just randomize the y rotation here okay so make a nice randomness here okay and then again we go to the part three model which is the present in the group number three increase the count and just increase the shape or maybe you can increase the shape for the x scale or maybe the z scale like this okay so now you can see that our far land is empty so what should we do just we go to the scene setup and our grass model is present in the group number one so we do one thing that we also place our grass model to the group number four okay just press shift and click on the group number four and it will select the both the groups for the same model and now hit ok then we go to the group number four but before we go to the group number four we first go to the group number one which is represent those grasses and then go to the very end of, for the group number one there is an option called under the group utility you will find the copy paste group just copy this and it will copy all the attributes for the group number one and then you go to the group number four and go to the under the group utilities just paste it okay so it will paste the all the attributes to the group number four model as well <clears throat> but we want those grass to this far land okay so for this i just increase the z scale just like this okay we'll see and then we also increase the x scale shape just like this and also we go to the particle look and just increase the particle size just like this okay and also do the same I mean also go to the shape scale and just increase the x z scale as well okay so you will see that our far distant land also covered with those grasses okay so now you will probably see that our render is laggy it's because it's a very huge scene here now because all the grasses are placed all over the surface and one thing you can also do that decrease the x scale shape just like this and also go over this particle size randomness just increase it little bit okay so now it look amazing and then again we go to the group number three go to the group number three and one thing i have to say that the setup of your scene is totally depends on you it's not necessary that you do the same that i do just i give you the idea that how you can use those grasses okay and now we just increase the x scale shape and also increase the tree count here maybe and then you place it little bit closer okay so this is look nice for now and again you go to the group number two and increase the rock count here just like this and you will see this look really amazing and now we do some render setting for our scene so maybe we we set up our scene 
nicely here and now we go to the render settings here and go to the fog settings and just enable the fog and change the color to maybe white and then we increase the start distance and also increase the fog range just like this okay and now we go to the ambient occlusion switch here and just turn this on and you will really get a nice ambient occlusion for our scene and if you want you can increase the intensity okay okay so now we create a light for our scene so go to the layer new and create a new light and we use the spotlight because we wanted the subsurface scattering so we use the spotlight here and everything look nice right now and now just hit ok so you can see that our light uh, place is here now we change the light position so just select the light and press P and now we change some settings here so you can see that if I change the light position here it goes like this and just we place our light somewhere in the right side here just like this and you can see that the subsurface scattering strength is too much so we will change it later on but first we just place our light in the right direction so it look nice okay so maybe here okay so this look nice for now and it looks like a very a bright afternoon time here and now we see that the subsurface scattering is looks too high so for this we go into the element editor layer and go to the effect control here and go to the subsurface scattering and we decrease the intensity to maybe 50 percent so just change this to 50 percent okay you will see that the scattering is now less and it look quite natural now okay and maybe we change the subsurface scattering color so first we go to the element layer and go to the scene setup again then we select this material and go to the subsurface settings and maybe change some settings here just like this and also do the same for this and maybe we make a little bright neon kind of color here and also do the same for this one too okay and now hit ok then hit ok little bit of change here but it look nice now we go to the camera and select this camera tool and maybe we change our camera position okay just like this and this look right for now and again we go to the element layer and you can see that there is some grain here because we use the uh, spotlight and you can see if i go to the spotlight settings here and there is this term that is the shadow diffusion if you increase this amount the shadow will be more diffuse okay you can see here if i increase this amount you will see that the more diffuse shadow here but when you use this diffusion at a high number your shadow will be diffused but you can see that there is some grain it's because if you go to the element layer and go to the shadow tab the shadow sample set to 6 and if I increase this number you will see that the grain will be disappear it's because we increase the shadow samples okay but remember that whenever you increase the shadow samples your render will be heavier okay so for uh, for the setup time we set it to its default value which is the 6 and when we are ready for render we can change this okay and also we do one thing that we increase this shadow map size as well because it is set to 1k and we can change this to maybe 4k so your shadow look more natural now okay so this is for now and then again we go to the fog settings when we increase the fog opacity a little bit not much just little bit making a bright background here okay and it's look quite nice for now and now we going to make some camera animation here as well as use some depth of field as well as 
okay so for this camera animation we go into the draft mode because we want our render to be a little bit fast to make a nice camera movement so maybe for this i press r to bring the camera rotation values and now we increase the y rotation like this okay and you can see that first we see those trees from the uh, bottom side and then we camera roll to our main view okay so for this first we may be going to the one seconds or so and make a keyframe here and then we go to the three seconds or maybe four seconds and we make this kind of animation here okay and you can see that our camera zoom is set to maybe wide angle so we can do one thing that we can increase the camera zoom for to make a little less wide shot here okay and now you can see that if i press the zero key to make a ramp preview here you will so after one second the animation will start so you will see that the camera is rolling down and it's look kind of awesome but uh, our camera is so much stable here and there is no shake so it's not look quite dramatic here but you can see that the grass is moving and it's look really nice though it is in the draft mode and if you change this to a full render you will it will look more beautiful press n key to end the comp area here and maybe we replay this you will see this look amazing okay so now we do some other camera movement trick which is the camera shake as well as camera pan or so so first we go to the camera and press a to bring the point of interest value and then we make a simple expression here so for this we press press and hold alt key and just click on this stopwatch here and then we type and then double bracket and inside the bracket we type maybe one comma fifty so it will create a little bit of camera and a shake as well so now you can see that the camera shake is little bit here because of this wiggle expression and then the camera goes down okay so it will make a little bit of dramatic camera movement here okay so but if you think that the camera shake is little bit too much so you can just decrease this by decreasing this frequency so maybe we use this 0.5 so it will create a less camera shake here okay so this look amazing for now so now we make some camera pan as well so in order to make a camera pan we uh, always use a null object to control the camera so create a null object here and make it 3d so once you make it 3d then we link our camera with that null object okay so now if we animate this null object over time our camera will be animated so press p to bring the position value for this null object and go to the very beginning of the scene and make a keyframe here and then we go to our very end frame here and just make a little bit of camera animation like this okay okay so now you can see that if i make a ramp preview here okay so let's play this
okay so now you can see that it creates a nice camera movement here but one thing if you notice that when we pass through this four seconds timeline the camera make a very rough jump here because uh, our keyframe that i use for the camera rotation if i press e to bring those keyframe here you will see that those keyframes are in a simple keyframe not i use any kind of easy ease on this so you will see that when it pass from this four second timeline it make a drastic jump here so no it doesn't make any smooth transition here so we have to do one thing that we just select those two keyframe here and press f9 or just right click on this and there is an option called as a keyframe assistant and make this easy ease and which is the f9 which is its shortcut for this so just click on this okay so now it will create a smooth transition from the camera rotation now you will see that there is no drastic jump it make a smooth camera movement here okay so this is the trick for camera movement and if you want you can make a camera rotation i mean the if you want a camera shake through its camera rotation you can do this as well so press r and make a, a expression on the z rotation as well so press and hold alt and click on this stopwatch here and make the same expression which is the wiggle and then the double brackets and inside the bracket we type maybe 0.2 comma 5 so now you will see little bit of camera shake from the z rotation as well okay just like this and one thing also you can do make a keyframe to the z rotation and now we rotate this way and then go to the very end frame here and we just rotate this this way so it make a little bit more dramatic camera movement here okay so maybe our camera movement is set and now we go to the full render view and let's make uh, another uh, i mean the ramp preview so let's see how it look like so far okay let's see wow you can see that the camera movement is really look nice and the scene also look nice but one thing we missing that the color correction okay so let's make a nice color correction for this scene and maybe i think that the subsurface scattering intensity is little too high so maybe we change this to maybe 30 percent okay so now it look nice go over this timeline and now we go to the layer create a new adjustment layer for this and i am using the magic bullet look effect for the color correction so i am not using any other LUTs. so it is very simple to make a nice color correction so if you don't have the look effect i recommend you to download this which is from red giant magic bullet look effect and once we apply this we go to the edit option here okay so maybe i using this block blaster warm presets here let's see which going to match so maybe or maybe choose another one so maybe this one i guess works nice here okay so now hit ok and then i decrease the strength here little bit and then again i create a new adjustment layer and go to the effect and go to the color correction and use a curve effect here and make a little bit bright here okay and again we go to the element 3d layer and go to the fog settings here and the fog intensity is little too high to maybe change this to 40 
okay so now you can see the sky clouds as well so it's look nice okay so now maybe i go to the elementary layer again and go to the group number one and which is represent this foreground of grasses so maybe i increase the size of those grasses little bit not much just a little okay because this grass is the most highlighted part of this tutorial so i am focusing on the grass so it can show in a better way here so now you can see that this look really amazing okay so now one thing we missing that the motion blur okay so in my previous tutorial i talked about that how you can apply the motion blur on the obj sequence because in the native motion blur which is the elementary default motion blur it only works when the camera in motion or any uh, motion graph motion design or motion in your scene it's all works but not in the obj sequence okay so for this uh, if you want to make a motion uh, i mean the motion blur on your grasses i i recommend you to check my previous tutorial on that so you will understand that how you can apply the motion blur on the obj sequence here so it is very simple and very effective if you try it out it will really creates a nice result here okay so now for this timing i am using only the native motion blur which is present inside the element 3d and just turn this on okay so it will make a little bit of uh, motion blur because our camera is moving here so you will see that there is some motion blur and if i turn this off the motion blur is gone it is a very subtle motion blur here okay and one thing i have to do that i turn on the camera depth of field so press aa after selecting the camera tool and turn this on it will make a nice depth of field for our scene okay you can see the depth of field and it's because it is not a very macro shot so if you make a very hard depth of field here it really makes a sense that it's a miniature so whenever you turn on the depth of field for your scene make sure that if it is a macro shot i mean the macro shot means that if you zoom your camera little too high in a very small area and it will make a very macro shot that if i go to the camera setting if i select on my camera and go to the camera setting you can see that there are plenty of lens um, sizes here which is a 15 millimeter lens or uh, 20 millimeter this millimeter refer i mean uh, indicates the focal length of your lens okay so more you the focal length it will be a very macro camera and if you make a less uh, focal length of your camera just like the 15 millimeter it will creates a very wide angle scene and if you make a very wide angle scene there is very less of depth of field so make sure to make any depth of field which is create a natural scene you have to make the camera to very macro lens okay which is the high number of depth, uh, focal length if you use a high number of focal length then you can use a very high level of depth of field and it will matches the scene okay so maybe i uh, understand you properly that when you use the depth of field or when not so this scene is not a very macro scene but if i change this to maybe 50 millimeter and then hit okay okay so if i change the camera focal length to 50 millimeter you will see that the zoom is increasing okay and now if i use any depth of filter it will look nice but in previous cases in my previous case you will see that the camera zoom set to 1227 and now if you use a very high number of depth of field it will not match the scene or it will really look fake or maybe it will look that the scene is very miniature kind of okay so make sure that whenever you use any kind of depth of field just change the camera zoom or change the camera focal length from here to a high number okay so it's a small tip for this scene and but if you really want to uh, make uh, use the depth of field you can do one thing that you just 
decrease the camera aperture value to maybe one or two okay so in this way you still have some depth of field in your scene okay so this will be work properly now and then I go to the very beginning here and make another ramp review but I am not using the motion blur for now so just I turn this off and then I make a ramp review for the final scene okay so let's play this wow you see this look really amazing so this is the basic trick for this scene and the landscape is not a certain thing you can change anything you want you can put a, a little house here or maybe and make the another camera movement here and maybe you can zoom in or zoom out the scene so it will all up to you but i giving you the idea that how you can use this okay so this is i guess you will understand that how i create the whole scene here and you can uh, watch my trailer video for this tutorial and you will understand that what else you can do by using those grasses so this is for today and i hope i give you all the ideas that how i create this so i hope you will like this and if you like this video please check my other videos and if you like those videos please do subscribe this channel okay so this is for today and uh, we will see in my next video so till then take care and bye bye and yes please make sure to download those grass because without this you can do this okay